Welcome to the Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Weekly Option. This is episode 292 on October 13th, 2023. I'm your host, Derek, and in this week's show, we'll cover the trades from last week on Novavax, Inc., Coles Corporation, and United Airlines Holding Corporation, and we discuss three new trades on Tupperware, AMC Entertainment Holdings, and British Petroleum, BP. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E R. I see at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the video tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And for anyone that wants to learn how to trade options or simply get better at how they're already trading, we've launched the weekly option membership group. The group features video training that can be accessed online when it works best for your schedule, daily interaction with me via chat and others in the group, and ongoing videos and webinars to make sure everyone is up to speed and gets the help they need. This is a community of option traders that can support you in your growth. So email me immediately if you want to learn more about becoming part of this exclusive group. Now, the equity markets inched higher over the week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average grew 262 points, closing at 33,670 points. The S&P 500 Index gained 19 points, ending the week at 4,327 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week is studying the markets. Now, when I first started trading, I remember seeing guys on the floor that just seemed to have a feeling that was always right. They didn't get too bogged down with the price action of the day because they had an intuitive sense of where the market was going. I figured they were born with a special gift, and I wished that I had been born with it as well, to be honest. I soon learned that it wasn't a special innate gift at all. These guys were doing their homework, and they came to work prepared. They knew support and resistance levels ahead of time. They knew areas of high volume from previous weeks. They spent time every evening studying the markets. It made them better traders. Now, I do that now for the main products that I trade on a daily basis. I want to start the day knowing which price levels have been sticky. I want to know if we're near support and resistance levels. I also want to have a sense of how far the markets have tended to pull back intraday or if they are likely to continue in a single trending path normally. I study the market. It's part of doing my homework. In fact, there's a great tool built into TradingView. It allows me to replay the entire day's price tick by tick. I watch how my signals and indicators changed based on price movement tick by tick. This alone is worth the price of the software. Studying the previous day's price action gives me an advantage when it comes to making decisions during the day on my trades. I also review my own performance, just like any professional athlete watches film to analyze and improve their their performance. So don't show up to the trading game unprepared. Don't wing it. Take the time to study the market and get better at your craft. All right, so last week was the last week that we looked at trades that expire using the October 20th expiration date. Let's go ahead and review the performance of last week's trades. So we're going to start off with the covered call on Novavax, Inc., symbol N as in November, V as in Victor, A as in Alpha, X as in X-Ray. At the time, the stock was trading for $7.62 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the October 8 call at $0.39, which could give us a return of 10.10% in two weeks. Well, shares of Novavax dropped $0.57, ending the week at $7.05 per share. The call option we sold lost $0.24, cents, leaving us with a net loss of $0.33. Cents. Now, we are only one week away from expiration, so the response to this loss is very clear. The option expires in five business days. I'll let this option expire out of the money 
and then I'll look to sell another option in the expiration month of November. The price for these options at the moment in November would yield a very nice profit and continue to lower our break even point. So while I like it when these trades work out in shorter time frames, I'm certainly open to selling another option and creating an even higher return on the capital spent on the stock. So keep track of the stock price over the next five days in case the stock rallies and the call option gets exercised. Next up, we had a credit spread on Kohl's Corporation, symbol K is in Kilo, S is in Sierra, S is in Sierra. At the time, the stock was trading for $18.70 per share. I looked at selling the October 19, 19 and a half call spread at 17 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 33 cents per spread. Now, shares of coal fell 90 cents, ending the week at $17.80 per share. The out of the money call spread that we sold is even more out of the money. The call spread is losing value, and we anticipate the call spread expiring fully out of the money since the stock is so much lower, and that would allow us to keep the full amount of premium we collected from selling the option. So this trade is working out as is. No adjustments are needed over the next week. And then our final trade from last week was a debit spread on United Airlines holding, symbol U as in uniform, A as in alpha, L as in Lima. At the time, the stock was trading for $41.82 per share. I looked at buying the October 42 half, 42 put spread for 31 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 19 cents, or that's a 61.29% return in two weeks. Well, shares of United Airlines fell $3.10, closing the week at $38.72 per share. The in the money put spread that we bought is now even more in the money. So the spread is more than $3 in the money, increasing the likelihood that it will expire in the money at expiration in five business days. So no adjustments are needed on this trade either. This one is certainly working out as is. You, of course, want to keep track of stock over the coming week in case you need to defend the trade in the next few days. But so far, so good on this one. It's looking like a great trade. So that's it for the trade review. This upcoming week, uh, will be the options expiration for monthly options in the month of October. So the new trades on this week's show will use the November 17th expiration date for monthly options expiring in the month of November. So we'll start off with the covered call. I'm looking at Tupperware, symbol T as in Tango, U as in Uniform, P as in Papa. The stock ended the week at $2.21 per share. I'm looking at buying stock and selling that November 2 half call at $0.30, cents which could give us a return of 26.7% in five weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $2.21 and then selling the November two half call at 30 cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $2.50 per share. The break even price is $1.91 and in real terms, the stock purchase will require $221 and you'll collect $30 for selling the option. Next up, we have our credit spread on AMC Entertainment Holdings, symbol A as in Alpha, M as in Mike, C as in Charlie. The stock ended the week at $9.49 per share. I'm looking at selling the November 9-8 put spread at $0.41, cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of $0.59 cents per spread. Now you enter this trade by selling the November 9 put at $1.09 and concurrently buying the November 8 put for $0.68. Cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $9 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $8.59 per share, and in real terms, you'll collect $41 per spread that you sell and have $59 at risk. And then our final trade on the week is going to be a debit spread on BP, British Petroleum, symbol B as in Bravo, P as in Papa. The stock ended the week at $40.02 per share. I'm looking at buying the November 39.40 call spread for $0.65, cents, which could give us a maximum gain of $0.35, cents, or that would be a 53.85% return in five weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the November 39 call for $2.05 and concurrently selling the November 4 call at $1.40. This is a debit spread because we're buying the spread 
and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $40 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $39.65 per share, and in real terms, you'll pay $65 to enter the spread, and your maximum gain is $35 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Definitely email me if you have any questions or if you'd like to hear more about joining the weekly option membership group. And hey, I hope you have a great weekend. And as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the weekly option podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.